Georgia O'Keeffe was born on her family's large Wisconsin farm in 1887. She would grow up to become one of America's most famous painters. Her clear, bright paintings show the beauty she found in the simple, natural things around her. Georgia loved to paint flowers, mountains, seashells, and even animal bones she found in the desert. Even though Georgia was interested in all kinds of natural things, she hardly ever painted pictures of people or animals. Georgia often rearranged the natural things she saw and simplified them. She made the seashell above very large to give it a special power and strength. Sometimes she painted shapes and colors that she saw in her mind. The farm where Georgia grew up was a great place to learn about nature. Georgia wanted to touch and feel everything she could get her hands on. Georgia remembered that when she was very little, she put dirt in her mouth to see what it tasted like. Georgia's mother thought art was very important and made sure Georgia and her sisters had art lessons while they were growing up. Georgia did so well with her lessons that her parents encouraged her to go to art college after she graduated from high school. Georgia studied at different art schools and colleges all over the country. At one school in New York City, she won a prize for her painting of a rabbit in copper pot. Georgia liked New York City. It was busier and more exciting than the peaceful farm areas where she had grown up. Georgia often visited a small gallery in New York that showed the work of new artists. It was owned by a well-known photographer named Alfred Steiglitz. Alfred loved modern art and tried to get people interested in modern European artists like Paul Cezanne and Henry Matisse and American artists like John Martin and Marsden Hartley. Georgia didn't know it at the time, but in a few years, Alfred would help get people interested in her paintings, too. After finishing school, Georgia decided to teach art for a while and traveled to Texas to take a job there. She found it an exciting place to be. Georgia loved the clear skies and the hot, bright sun. She felt the energy and power of the dust storms and heat lightning she saw at night. Georgia started to show the excitement she felt about Texas in her paintings. Soon her work looked different from the work of any other artist. During this time, Alfred Steiglitz became very interested in Georgia. O'Keefe. He remembered her from his visits to his gallery and had seen some of her newest works of art. Alfred thought Georgia could become one of the best American artists ever. Georgia, I'm sorry, Alfred wrote a letter to Georgia and asked her to come back to New York. He told her he could raise enough money so she wouldn't have to work and could spend all her time painting. He also offered to show her artwork in his gallery. Georgia found it hard to leave the beauty of Texas, but decided Alfred's offer was too good to miss out on. After she arrived in New York, Georgia began painting bold shapes and designs, covering her canvases with bright colors. Soon, her work changed, and she began painting the beautiful flowers that helped to make her famous. Georgia usually made her flowers very large. She hoped they would make people feel the same wonderful way she felt when she looked at real flowers. Georgia thought her large flowers might even get busy New Yorkers to stop and notice them. Georgia's paintings got attention right away. At first, people were curious to see the work of a woman artist. In the 1920s, there weren't many well-known women artists. 
It didn't take long for people to realize that Georgia O'Keeffe wasn't just a woman artist. She was a great American artist. Even though Georgia needed money to live, she felt funny about selling her art. Georgia worked hard on her paintings and felt so close to them that she hated to see them leave the gallery. They were almost like her children. In between painting and showing her work, Georgia agreed to model for Albert Steiglitz. Alfred thought Georgia was very beautiful and took many famous photographs of her. Alfred and Georgia have respected each other's talent for a long time. Now that Georgia was living in New York and working closely with Alfred, they found themselves falling in love. In 1924, they decided to get married. They moved into an apartment high up in a big hotel. Georgia loved the wide open view she saw and started painting pictures of the city. This surprised many people because in the 1920s, powerful city scenes were usually done only by men. Several years later, later, Georgia was invited out west to visit some friends in New Mexico. She thought the desert and clear blue skies there were even more exciting than the scenery in Texas. Georgia began painting the animal bones, desert flowers, and sun-baked adobe churches she found there. Georgia especially loved the mountains in New Mexico. They seemed almost alive to her. In some paintings, you might get the feeling that Georgia's mountains could get up and move around. Georgia spent most of the rest of her life painting in New Mexico. Alfred agreed it was the best place for her to, to be in order to make her paintings as good as possible. Georgia only traveled back to New York for a few months every year to be with Alfred and show her work. Years later, after Alfred died, Georgia moved to New Mexico for good. Georgia O'Keeffe lived to be 98 years old. She decided to become an artist at a time when it was proper only for women to teach art. Georgia didn't care what people thought about her or her art. She worked hard on her paintings and put her own special feelings into them. Georgia met many famous artists during her life. She learned a lot from them, but never copied their styles or joined their groups. Because of this, Georgia O'Keeffe's paintings are very original. She often found beauty in things that most people would ignore or never even notice, and was able to show that beauty in her paintings. The end.